Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to our webinar. Our webinar today in the Holistic Wellness Series. The subject will be the DNA and being in your heart. How your DNA can change for better or worse, it's all up to you. Everything is connected with everything. And if you look at facts or, or concepts and ideas from wider perspective, it's much easier to understand them and make sense. While if you look at things from very narrow perspective, you miss a lot of information, truth. You may not be aware of everything that's going on. It's always better to be aware. The physical universe is a manifestation of divine matrix or energetic blueprint operated by divine consciousness that many of us call God. I'm just going to make some points and I'll give you some references so you can, if that concept is new for you, or does make sense, you can investigate it further and educate yourself. Just like everything that's created is actually originated from consciousness that we call God, it's obviously something much higher than we are. I'll explain a little more for those that are new to the concept. To look at our reality, our personal reality is created by personal awareness and consciousness, which obviously are limited compared to the divine or God consciousness or matrix. And our consciousness and subconsciousness, and which is also created by our belief system and affected by our belief system, are responsible to the creation of our life. That includes our health and everything that we experience in our life. So the good things, the bad things, actually direct relationship to those uh, factors. And in my book, which is available, from us, from Amazon, also at the Kindle electronically, you can read and understand it better with more details. Our current Western science assumes that consciousness awareness is the results of chemical reaction in the brain. And if you see something that doesn't fit their paradigm, it's, it'll tell you it's hallucination. And the basic belief system, if you really check it out, will be based on the idea that everything happened by accident. So according to them, we started as a cell and then we got into the process of so-called evolution, according to Darwin, which is absolutely, totally wrong. And Darwin admitted that he was wrong and there's a lot of scientific evidence that proved the opposite. But they said that some, somehow by accident, there was one cell that eventually created all this animal life and human life and so forth and so on. We'll maybe touch that subject, but you can investigate it yourself. So that's one wrong, another wrong exception in my view. And in general, if you look at science, it assumes that they're superior to nature in their understanding. So they think they can do better than nature as far as what they can do. So basically what's God or whoever created us or the, the universe and nature around us, they can be better than God, which for me, it's like saying that they can invent a better wheel really understand that aspect and again you can explore it further yourself that's a reason also in my view that this is the direct result of all this very dangerous creation we have created that science unfortunately have created and i'll just mention a few and again if anything that i'm saying it's new for you i urge you to investigate because if you take for example gmo foods if you go to university, most of them will tell you GMO foods are fine. So nothing could be further of the truth. If you, that's what you believe, whether you assume, because the scientists in university telling you that, just do your own investigation. It's actually, in my view, guarantee you illness and cancer. If you eat too much, a lot of it for long enough time. That's what happened in animal. Mtrails, if you don't know what that is, check it out immunizations, giving the body poisons to suppress symptoms, which conventional medicine does, use of pesticides. If you understand that all these creations are totally wrong, are more harmful than beneficial to humanity, I believe, and I explained it in my book, that all these absurdities, which are supposed to be for our own good, and actually they're you understand them to a highest detriment, all these absurdities are created by prevailing victim belief system. Victim belief system implies that win-lose rather than win-win, which means somebody has to lose for you to win. It'll never win-win. 
or another aspect of that a way to describe it is let us me victimize other before they victimize us rather than creating everything to the as good of all concern because if you believe that you're victim and that's really our very deep, deep underlying belief system i believe it's the source of all disease and human suffering on this planet because i believe the god and the matrix it created have all the answers for everything in harmony we actually with our belief system that we're victim, we imply that we have no control of our reality. And then obviously you won't hurt or victimize or take advantage of others. Otherwise they'll do it to us. So this is the survival of the fittest, which probably is also part of Darwin philosophy, which I think is, if you really do your own investigation, you see it's totally wrong. As far as victim belief system, if you haven't, I urge you to watch the video on my website, it's also on YouTube, a brain regeneration, which explains in more detail, in addition to what I explained in my book, it explains what's you know really going on as far as the victim belief system, what it implies, what it results in. If you explore this subject, you will find out that all suffering and all this belief system, which is against natural law and scientific law, as far as I'm concerned, proven scientifically, by the way, it's also the thing that science is the ultimate answer. Eventually it will be because it'll find the truth. This belief system actually allows a very small minority of heartless people to harm us all and create all kinds of systems, technologies, organizations that benefit them and harm us. So basically we give our power away to few. There is actually a lot of scientific evidence that prove that all these assumptions that science has, uh, or most of it has, uh, which results in these technologies are totally wrong and detrimental. And this evidence, scientific evidence, is actually, because it's also a political issue for the people that control the media, control the university to great degrees. Any scientists come with uh, information that totally contradict what they're telling you, he's being destroyed or the information is hidden or suppressed. And I'll give you examples, but I'll tell you a little story. I had a very good friend that was professor at UF. He was in IFAS, he was entomologist, but amazing knowledge in quantum physics and mathematics, and he actually published in all these journals, not only in entomological. He probably was, I'd say, at least 50 years ahead of his time. And even though he proved everything with computers, with, with the current technology, his points his peers totally ignored him, he just didn't want to go there. It's no different than when Galileo looked at the telescope, the church, people didn't want to look at it because they didn't want to do the truth. Exactly. Nothing really changed in that way. So just to give an example, because that's it's, it's personal knowledge, he was a very good friend. He invented solar collector that had 92% efficiency. If you want to know what 92% efficiency is, it means that if you had like one by one uh, square foot uh, solar collector, it will give you all the electricity you need for your house, for your car forever. The government, like thousands of others, confiscated this technology and NASA uses it. His name, by the way, was Philip Callahan. He wrote incredible books that explained that the connection between energy and agriculture and earth and amazing, amazing facts. Uh, look Kesha Foundation on the internet, do you search, they have a website, and it's an Iranian man that lives in Belgium, and he actually created technology, which is actually to sell and give free to government, of creating with magnets free energy to everybody. Imagine, energy will cost you practically nothing, what it'll do to the world. Uh, the government, especially, is not interested. But check it out, because somebody told me they actually started selling his devices. Cold fusion, Richard Malov, they tell you cold fusion is not scientific. Actually, it was it was suppressed. Check yourself because this man was in prestigious uh, Ivy League engineering institute and he left them because they suppressed cold fusion. He was going to put it to work and just check online and see what happened to him when he announced his intention to start using it commercially. Check it yourself. Now, Luc Montagnier is a Nobel Prize winner. He actually shows something amazing, which really ties up and explain what I'm going to talk to you about today. He actually showed that DNA will form spontaneously 
in a tube of pure water, nothing else, no other elements. What they did, they take a sealed DNA ampule of glass, sealed DNA in water, connected it with other several ampules in a wire and put in frequency, which is about the frequency of Schumann resonance, which is natural frequency. We won't get into it. And in every experiment, DNA appear in the vials that had only pure water, no DNA. Again, you can check it out. Everything is online. Wilhelm Reich, he was a prodigy of Freud, and then they parted. But he was an incredible scientist, years ahead of his time. He actually proven that if you take silica has been heated to 1,000 degrees and sterile water, within 24 hours, you have life forming spontaneously. Uh, it's a very sad story. You can just do your own search because he created a lot of technologies, healing technologies, and a lot of theories, which are wonderful. The, it, again, it's online. I'll give you some other resources. You can check it out uh, that summarize the information. But what's interesting that he was, interestingly, enemy number one of the of FDA. He actually was curing cancer beginning of the 50s, he ended in prison, they, they imprisoned him and he died in prison. This is really interesting because what they did, the FDA and all these parts to be in the government, they will literally burn any book that talk about organ energy, which was the, his theory, the energy that he described and his technology based on the organ energy. Nobody was allowed to even mention it or, or even in writing, it was totally tabooed, it's amazing. You know you're in a free country, quotation mark. That's the 50s, not now. And it's not better now, unfortunately. Yet, it will be, don't worry. Interesting information about Wilhelm Reich that obviously over the years now, they're not going to put you in prison or, or burn your books. If you write about or mention organ energy of Wilhelm Reich in your publication, they're actually scientists from South America in universities what they do, they duplicated his work, but also what they show when they took iron shaving that were heated to like 1,000 degrees, which meant totally sterile, with sterilized water, also created life spontaneously within 24 hours. So basically what it shows that life can appear spontaneously. DNA, which is common to all life forms, they're actually very, very little, even the, within plant and man, there's a very little relatively different. And uh, so it actually shows that creation is the way things most likely have been created. Anyway, just to mention briefly that if you believe that everything happened by accident, you have no control of your life. So they want to tell you life created by accident. There's no accidents against natural laws. Everything comes from consciousness and awareness, as I mentioned before. And by the way, going back, it's really important for each one of us personally. That was probably the first step that helped me wake up in a serious manner, in a really deep manner. I realized from my studies and my life experiences, you're not a victim. Once you realize that you, you open yourself to a freedom and more control of your life and more happiness and resolving issue that thought, you know, it's impossible, whether it's illness or any problem in your life. But so uh, those of you that the idea that you're not a victim or that Reality is a result of belief rather than the you believe re results of reality around you, which makes you totally out of control and victim. That's what you believe. Don't feel bad about it. That's how we've been all indoctrinated. So that's humanity issue to grow up and wake up. And that's responsibility for each one of us. But if you never thought about it or didn't realize it, you really want to explore. My book will be a good place to start because when enough of us realize that all this things of victimizing ourselves and others without even seeing it, and you'll understand why when you study that, we'll cease and we'll have better planet and better things happening around uh, us. And there's actually some good news coming. The good news is, and the always good news, is that many people supposedly in the know, I believe they are, we just have to see what happens. There is very soon, probably soon, I don't know if it's going to happen in the next, by the end of the year or beginning of next year, or sometimes in the near future. I don't believe it's going to take 10, 20 years. There's a lot of disclosure will transpire because many people there, you have more whistleblowers 
and many people are aware of suppressed technologies, free energy, and they suppress healing modalities, and they release the knowledge, the technologies, like I mentioned before, and allow humanity to have these things. It'll create incredible revolution that will accelerate the process of humanity waking up and stopping victimizations for war and manipulation in politics and so forth and in war and military industrial complexes and banking entities that basically controlling the world and uh, using the victim solution, which I'll explain in the other video, brain regeneration that basically gives them so much power and money that they can suppress all the knowledge that can literally Yes, obviously set us free. As you can see from what I said, talking about our DNA, the DNA is modulated by consciousness, which is our belief system, and modulated by mass consciousness, and the divine matrix, basically what I call God matrix. And let me explain, clarify what is what I call divine matrix or God matrix or whatever you want to call it, a different name in different cultures. But I'll, I'll give an example. When you're in your mother's womb, have two cells, you unite and then start to divide. So at the initial point, you will have 64 cells, 128 cells and so forth. At this point, the DNA is identical. All cells are totally identical. How come these cells all of a sudden start to change and become all these system tissues. And eventually you have a baby that has liver, spleen, all these systems and organ. And we know very well that the DNA that in the liver, it's not identical DNA in the kidneys because it creates different chemicals, different proteins and so on and so on. How can it happen that identical cells, all of a sudden the DNA start to change in a certain plan or a certain blueprint and you have this incredible body, incredible baby. Is it just by accident somebody rolls a dice? That's totally, total nonsense. The explanation is actually very simple, is that there is matrix of energy, matrix of information, the same matrix that Luc Montagnier showed that creates DNA spontaneously. And those matrix energetically direct this embryonic development to a human being or animal or whatever the embryo is. Same thing for plants. And this divine matrix is not created by us. We don't have the capability, but it's created from consciousness. Everything comes from consciousness. And obviously compared to us, this consciousness will be unlimited and, and you know, people are religious will call this God. It doesn't matter how you call it, but the same thing. It's a divine matrix that has everything that we need to see, just look look at the window, look at the plants, look at the planet, look at the universe. There is a plan that, that creates it and keeps it in motion. See, it's no different. Think about it. Are you responsible to, when you longer are breathing and your heart is, is, is pumping blood, do you have to think about it and tell it? No, it's automatically. When the seed grows into a huge tree over time, the, are you control of that? No, it's, it's a matrix of energy. And what you have to understand is this, matrix or blueprint keep working all the time you're really never disconnected from it because when you're disconnected you're done you're dead and you go on to a, to another place which is beyond the scope of this uh, presentation but the matrix is there all the time let me give you others as many examples just to give you an idea the effect of course of white cells they did studies and they showed something very interesting they took people and showed them different kind of movies, scary movie, happy movie, funny movies. And they took blood from them and look at the microscope at the white cells. When the person was seeing like scary, negative, fearful movies, his DNA contracted. And it was next room, not in their body. And when they showed the movies where they were happy, laughing, inspired, the DNA expanded. And when they took the same blood 300 miles away, it works the same way instantaneously. You see, the DNA is like an antenna that connects you with the divine matrix. God, or call it the Shechina in Hebrew, the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter how you call it, but it exists all the time. Now, as the Bible say, and all cultures say, we are a, 
a spark of God or the image of God within us, we, in a little, little tiny way, not huge way like you see all around you, the miracle of nature and the universe, we also are co-creator in a way. God or divine matrix that we come from actually, and it can't exist without it, gave us a free will, I believe, to believe that we're victim or create negative creation, which creates suffering with the purpose of waking up. And I think that that's good time for all humanity waking up because the negative things getting such huge proportion that uh, the divine matrix, God or earth or whatever, it's not going to take it anymore, so to speak. And I believe it's not meant to scare you, but it's a wonderful thing are happening because people are waking up. So the DNA is actually an antenna. The truth is that all your body is an energetic information system, like the water in your body is like the hard drive of your body and it affects it by frequencies that in turn affect your DNA. So there's a very intricate connection between everything. But the bottom line is the divine matrix creates certain energetic frequencies, energetic field that uh, communicate and regulate our body, whether directly or indirectly through the sun, the other natural frequencies created by the universe around us, by earth and so forth and so on. Now, what happened is that we've been given choice to not to be in tune or in harmony with this divine matrix, which is unconditional love, which Jesus talks about, and many c cultures talk about it in one way or another, to one degree or another. We were given the, the ability to transgress, so to speak, or have negative belief, create negative emotions. And the ne negative emotions actually don't allow our DNA to modulate optimally, and then we create suffering. And, and let me just give you, just for the purpose of discussion, or, or give you, make you aware. You have to realize that all the energies around us, you are in Florida, for example, or the mountains or whatever, the local frequencies modulate your body and help your body act or function in this environment optimally. Those frequencies that you have here, for example, in Florida, we're talking from are not the same frequencies in the Himalaya. So you get used to the feet and you, you manage it. If you try to go to the Himalayas in the mountains and try just to walk, few minutes, you can get severely, severely sick. The local people will go up and down the mountain all day, back and forth, like nothing happened to them. For you, it'll take time to adjust, again, because the frequencies modulate them to adapt to the environment. That's, by the way, in parentheses, the idea that it's better to eat local food and local water because this is local energy. But the point is that, at the same token, all the frequencies around you and this divine matrix is give you optimal way for healing to regulate you to adjust you to everything's changing the world the universe changing the energy is changing but it can keep you in perfect health emotionally mentally physically however if you break the rules so to speak whether it was good intention or with ignorance you still it's a divine or natural law not knowing the law does not prevent you from the consequences when your connection just like the connection in utero, usually it's pretty good, and you develop this baby. And incidentally, we know from studies and from a discipline I'm using, like nutripuncture, that we understand now that if the mother is under stress during pregnancy or is sick or misgiving about the baby she's carrying, you actually can create in your physical body, in your cells, information that predispose you for health problem, emotional and mental problem, because parents are not saint and didn't grow in saint society. So your DNA is affected from the moment of conception, actually, positively or negatively. Obviously, most mother made it okay with all the imperfection, but you have to, to realize that. So whenever our DNA is not in a perfect alignment with divine matrix, which actually will mean our mothers and fathers will be like Christ-like and everybody in society will be Christ-like, I believe it's coming anyway, but that's a side note. But until then, we have to realize that all this energetic blockage or energetic misinformation actually disconnect us to one degree or the other with the divine matrix that can perfectly affect our DNA. And we know or, or regulate it to optimal function, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. And we'll talk about, and you will see how 
this connection to the divine matrix has been interfered with by the culture, by the food that we eat, and so forth and so on. But the good news is for the same token, they're very, relatively very simple way to reconnect with it. I learned over the years from my experience, and those of you that don't know, I worked for many years before I was in full-time holistic practice. I, I realized that your consciousness, awareness, belief system is actually the source of all your well-being, emotional, mental, and physical. And I actually worked with all these many people healed themselves from so-called incurable illnesses like even cancer, uh, just using the mind. So your connection can be restored in spite of all the mess or all the, the problem we have created on earth and around you, which a, a lot of them, you don't have direct control, but you can, there's nothing you cannot make up with your consciousness because your connection with the divine matrix can be so strong that it will transcend any other negative factors around you, whether it's your family, whether it's your government, whether it's whatever, okay? Or even toxicity. I just give you an example you probably heard or know people that walk on fire on coals. How can you can you walk like one lady walked 220 feet on coals, like I don't know, thousand degrees, not being burned? It just shows you that with your mind, with your consciousness, when you're connected to the divine matrix, any miracle is so-called miracles. It's not miracle because the possibility, the connection. The potential is there. Nobody can take it away from you. And that's the reason that you have in such dramatic healing or you go to prayer, you go to church and the energy field is so strong that it's literally creates spontaneous healing. It happens all the time. You can do your own investigation. The belief system of victim obviously is a problem. And on the other side, the belief system that you are source, I am source or I'm in control of my reality. Again, you're in control not of others, but in your reality, you are in control as part of God, the image of God, which means you're not God and you can know everything. That's another aspect of working on yourself, you're releasing all judgment. Leave all the judgment to God. And if you don't believe in so-called God, it's a divine matrix. It's really the same thing. Name, it doesn't matter. There's a way to do that. Now, when I'm saying releasing all judgment, I'm not saying releasing this discernment. Somebody does something that you recognize as not right, not the best, not to his eyes good. You're not going to do that. You're not going to steal or kill somebody or do something that hurts somebody. But you don't judge it as good, bad, right or wrong as far as you criticizing them. You do it through releasing all judgment, sometimes forgiveness if you need, and being in your heart. What does being in your heart mean? Being in your heart means... Experience love and compassion to yourself and everything around you all the time. Now, how do you achieve that? Again, it may sound like it's easy said than done. Not really, because we have so much ingrained belief that we're victim. And a lot of time, even positive belief that we have are actually implying victimhood. Let me give you an example from my practice as a doctor. If somebody that you love, a friend, gets cancer or disease supposedly incurable or very, very dangerous, what would be your reaction? Oh, you're upset, you're angry, you're fearful, you're worried about them, and obviously you do your best to help them. What you're really doing with those judgment about negative judgment about cancer is that you putting energy because your thought create negative energy. And you're actually helping people to have the cancer, helping them with the prevailing belief that they have usually, or even if they don't have, so many people around them, family and mass consciousness, believe that cancer is horrendous, the end of the world or terrible thing. And you're actually helping their cancer, helping them to be in stress and delaying or, or interfering with the healing. It's, that's really one of the main reasons people don't get well from cancer, but that's again, a very interesting subject. But the point is, if you realize these principles, you release all judgment about the cancer. You're not God. You don't know why they have cancer. Once you release all your judgment, you realize there is divine program for everybody. And you're not God to tell what's right or wrong, why this and that. The only thing that you can do is Jesus do, release all judgment and love. Now, if you, that relative, if you release all your judgment, 
about cancer, about them being poor, them and so forth and so on. You just love them unconditionally. Then you really help the healing and you can actually create miracles, but at least you're really supporting them. Otherwise, you're really bothering them and hurting them with good intention. But if you look at most of your belief system, you will see that if you kind of scratch the surface of the belief, always based on fear belief, oh, I'm a victim, or I have no control of my life. And I did a training many years ago that people did a belief exercise and you, you wrote three beliefs about your health, about your family, about money, about work. And even though most people believe seems to be positive when you spread, the reason for the belief was total fear and victim belief system. So explore it yourself. How do you do that? I mean, you can do directly, just choose to release judgments. And uh, on my website, drtalmor.com, you have a link self-help and it's called self-help project. You can just start doing it right away. And then once you do that, it's very easy to forgive if you need to and just stop judging. Just open your heart to love and compassion. That's all you need to do. There is information on my website. There is tools. There are many, many tools, by the way. It doesn't matter what you, which one you use. Effortless healing. I have brain regeneration program, which is basically a program that gives you many options to many tools to reprogram your brain, to reconnect your DNA with the divine matrix. And it literally, what science actually showed, that's why I asked you to watch certain videos if you haven't watched, to see that when you do that, actually your DNA changes, your brain DNA changes, and you create cells in your brain and pathways proven physically that will actually, instead of reacting automatically with fear and stress because of your victim belief system, to pathways or your brain start acting to the stimulation of what happened in your environment with peace, love, harmony, non-stress, all the good things I'm talking about. Because it's been proven that when you do all this kind of work, your DNA changes. And bear in mind that 95 of your DNA, which is called originally junk DNA by our smart scientists, because they didn't understand what it does. Today, we know that DNA can change and you can literally heal even so-called to a certain degree, even congenital fault. And unfortunately, like in all our belief system, people do genetic testing. Fortunately, they use it to say, oh, you have this and this, X, Y, Z, uh, change, and they have it all MTFR. It's all true, but it, it says, oh, I'm victim, I'm this and this, I have this problem because of the DNA. No, if you just do simple thing, which I mentioned in my website, as far as not only mentally and physically, you can help a lot just by eating right and learning about the things good for you and do what you need to do to avoid things that disturb the DNA, which we mentioned briefly. When you do all the things, you can actually resolve practically any issue in your life. And of course, if you take care of your physical body by learning that GMO food is not good for you, electromagnetic Wi-Fi pollution affects you, not that you can overcome it, with your mind, you can overcome anything with your mind and consciousness, just like people can walk on fire, but it make it much harder. For most of us, I wouldn't say it's hard, it's different because we've been programmed so deeply. There are many tools, I just mentioned a few, thework.com, watch the video, this is Byron Katie, she has another logical system that allows you to really release all your judgments, even in the worst terrible thing that may have happened to you. It's just wonderful videos. You can really start when you watch it or use her system, which is given free by her in her website, to realize that the bottom line, she called it love, how she called it, love what is. Love what is, which means if you just let go of any judgment and just love everything and accept everything, and you have a lot of clues how to do it just from watching a video and doing it yourself. It's a very, very helpful tool. There is another thing, if you don't know about Wayne Dyer, he's wrote some wonderful books. He just passed away end of last month. And there is a video on Guy M TV. He say, I am that I am. I am that I am. This is really what the burning bush or God, if you're religious, told Moses. And basically what it means, I am that I am, the meaning is that you are a spark of God. You are. And sometimes just saying it, because words have energy and the intention also counts. That's how the Bible said that God has created saying the word. You just say yourself men uh, mentally or even loudly. Just, a, just an example. I am that I am. I am love. I am whole. And you can say I am healed, which healed always means physically 
and spiritually. And I want to make a point here that what I realized all these years of working with people, not only on the physical level, but encourage them to forgive, to learn to use the consciousness more positively and beneficially to connect with the matrix, as I'm talking here, I realized that all problems in life, all illnesses, whatever it is that you're not happy about, are there as a gift to help you grow emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, because you don't take your physical body when you move on, you take your consciousness, your spirituality. So you basically nourish your spirit. The things that are not good in your life or in the world, don't judge them. Just focus, just, just send them love. And when you stop judging, solution will come to you, information. The matrix gives you not just automatic modulation of health, it also gives you information through many ways, through meeting certain people, reading certain books which are perfect for you, getting certain ideas, because as I say, there are many tools and you, if you do or read about my brain regeneration program, you just choose the tools or books and resources. Once you find the tool that you like, that can relate to, just do it. And you connect to the matrix, you're basically regenerating your DNA. In summary, let me just go, I covered a lot and very deep subject that you can explore yourself. In summary, our DNA has unlimited potential for change, for better and worse. Also, when there is betterment of our DNA, our health physically improve, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, we can prevent disease, which is the easiest thing, heal any illness in potential and do it more rapidly and easily. The same token, the more we work that way or do this kind of things, the more we connect what we call divine matrix slash God which has solution to all the problems. In fact, I realized over the years, in potential, you cannot have any problem that is no wonderful divine solution. And it's all about correcting you believe and correcting how you think and what, and you just need to start, wake up by paying attention. Obviously the most efficient way is to improve our DNA using our mind consciousness. This is really gives you most leverage. I, I realized it years ago and I tell my patient, you don't have to do this kind of work or pay attention to your reality this way, even though it doesn't cost you anything and nobody puts gun to your head, prevents you from doing it if you want to. This part of, of your, your self taking responsibility for your conscience and mind gives you most leverage toward healing anytime and it doesn't cost you anything. So you don't have to do it to get well, but it's actually a gift that you're giving to yourself and I highly recommend it. Again, check out your victim beliefs, forgive yourself and others, pay attention to your thoughts and belief, understand the difference between discernment and judgment. If you're the scientific type, need the scientific proof to things, you'll find out that quantum physics already showed in the beginning of last century that your belief, your expectations, what you expect from experimenting quantum physics will affect the results. So we as observer affect what we see. And that's also true for all these doctors that prove you that medication works. They have this intention and the universe will manifest their intention that you have to be victim and poison to heal. And they have all the scientific, then conventional medicine is scientific. I just make a, a, like a note, which is interesting that ultimately if you scratch the surface, you realize that most of the stuff that they do is really not only logical, not scientific, it's bogus. And I quote here an interesting fact. I believe it was early 90s. Yeah, I think I wasn't sure it was early 90s. New, New England of Medicine published a very interesting article. New England Journal of Medicine is one of the most prestigious conventional medical. And they, somebody, mathematician obviously, and, and statistician made analysis of the mathematics of for a certain period of time, all the medical uh, research papers that were published because everything, every time you do research and find numbers and you have to analyze it. And you find out that 80% of them were totally bogus, incorrect, which means 80% of the most prestigious journal, all the results that they give you are practically totally false. Anyway, it's interesting. And also another thing, especially today with the proliferation of cell phone, Wi-Fi, you need to Pay attention to this if you haven't heard about it, if you care about your well-being, that magnetic and electric field influence the atomic and the subatomic particles, including in your body, and that's also disconnected from the divine matrix. Again, in parentheses, I want to mention, not that you cannot 
overcome it with all this wonderful thing I'm talking about. But let's say Wi-Fi, unfortunately, you cannot smell it, even though some people are getting very sick now, become very sensitive. But if you don't take care of it, the practical results of having high levels of Wi-Fi radiation, which most people have because they don't realize the problem, it'll be try to meditate or pray or be loving when you have in your room a whole bunch of of doo-doo that smells horrendously. Try to be happy, of course. Now, the only difference is that when it's, it's doo-doo and it smells bad, it's very obvious. Radio frequency or Wi-Fi, and, which is microwave radiation, you don't see it, but it's still very harmful to your body. You may not smell it unless it makes you sick, which some people do. So anyway, bear this in mind and take to heart. If you really want to facilitate your ability to work emotionally, mentally, spiritually, watch the video, getting well is getting out of the box. Because when your body is sick, your ability to change your DNA, and it's sick, it's stressed, poisoned, it reduces your ability of your mind to work well and pay attention to things and actually even do anything because your mind and body health are totally connected. So again, the most basic step, in fact, in my experience of quite a few years now that some people, you told them about the things like talking to the wall, but once they start to eat good and they listen to you and you cleanse them and do all the right things, all of a sudden they want to know, they want to do things because now the brain starts working. So pay attention to that too. Be aware of the feeling are created by your belief and the belief actually the motor of creation. If your belief are negative, it can create illness. It will mess up your DNA. It actually allow your DNA to function adversely. Your body cannot respond properly and non function properly. Don't process your vitamins and, and amino acids properly. On the other hand, positive feeling will improve your DNA. And actually, they did a lot of studies years ago. There was a field called psychoneuroimmunology. They found out something very interesting. People that were totally supplemented with amino acids, vitamin, but were under stress, their body still functions as if they're deficient. And then they took people that were obviously deficient in vitamin and amino acids, but they're happy, joyful, and they function perfectly. Anybody can do that. It's not difficult. It's, it's just different what you're used to. But once you get used to do the good thing for yourself, it's only benefit you. The only danger it is that you just feel better physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It just takes that you pay attention and use your own will and decision to do the things. All you have to do is be consistent, choose to do it. And that's another very, very important point. If you're going to do it like once a week or when you go to church or before you go to sleep, that's great. But if you really want to do literally miracles, you have to learn to get yourself to do it on the go. Because many of the tools that I mentioned that in the reference that I gave you, you can do it when you drive, when you talk to other people. And the more you do it, you become it, then you do it all the time. It's like being in prayer or in positive space in your heart in love. And when you do that, you will see that everything in your life will get better. And then you really enjoy who you are, which I believe you're a spark of God with a limited potential for good. So take advantage and hope all this discourse makes sense to you. So anybody has any questions or comments? I have a question. Yeah. Um, is, does, when you, when you change your environment, how does that affect, does it affect your DNA or how does it affect your, um, I guess, being? I'm sorry, how did it affect your yeah, environment? You saying, yeah, when you when you change a certain environment or go from, you know, one... Oh, you one mean physical environment. environment? Yes. Yeah. The physical, you see, everything radiates energy. If you go to the forest, you have certain energy. If you go to the beach, it's not the same feeling and energy, right? Because mm -hmm. just like every person emanates energy, if you go to the room, everybody is happy, joyful, loving, you feel good. If everybody is hateful, angry, you feel kind of mm -hmm. uh, bad or, or cold. The same token, rocks, trees emanates energy. Everything emanate, Everything is alive, even inanimate objects, by the way. We know that the moon has certain energy that affect Earth and the sun and so on and so on. So when you're alive, you communicate with a lot of energy, human, inanimate, 
uh, even for example if the environment is natural like trees and you usually feel good in nature if the environment full of wi-fi metals or, or not natural products you're less likely to feel good and the reason is that your body gets information from natural wave that modulates you on many many levels including adaptation to the environment so this is the reason that it's a subtle effect but it's real and some people it's more than others you see some people can go to the himalaya take them to adjust one week some people need three months for the same adjustment because their body is not used and and that's one of the reasons when you travel by car long long time or by airplane your body that's biologically adapted to the environment that you have whether it's sand in florida rock in the mountains it takes time to adjust this is one of the reasons long travel will actually weaken your body energetically one of the reasons because your body has to adjust do you understand mm -hmm. that makes sense that's all yes. mm -hmm. anybody has any other question about any subjects concerning holistic medicine yeah I, it was very interesting and, and it definitely intrigued me and i'm gonna look into the subject a lot more so all i can tell you since you're young you're a student in uf this is a time to learn about the things because it'll benefit you beyond your wildest imagination because unfortunately some people never learn anyway and they live in suffering and stress blaming others and in misery if you understand this principle and put them to work everything in your life will work better and you'll never know the suffering and the problem that you see around you they'll less likely or never happen to you so that's really yeah. the time for young people to kind of wake up now don't learn from bad experiences which is also it's okay that's what most people do but it's prevention is infinitesimally better than any cures yeah i i, I definitely agree and although my situation now being in school i look into the subject a lot more so all i can it, tell you since you're young you're a student in uf right this is the time this is the time to learn about the things because it'll benefit you beyond your wildest imagination because unfortunately some people never learn anyway and they live in suffering and stress blaming others and in misery if you understand this principle and put them to work everything in your life will work better and you'll never know the suffering and the problem that you see around you they'll less likely or le never happen to you so that's really yeah. the time for young people to kind of wake up now learn from bad experiences which is also it's okay that's what most people do but it's prevention is infinitesimally better than any cures yeah i i, I definitely agree and although my situation now being in school i am gonna i know i'm gonna be in school for the next few months and when i do graduate it's um reassuring to know that i can kind of be wherever I want to be and kind of follow follow my own path. Exactly. And that's a good point because you know I have actually workers that work for me from UF. I mean students that went later to the health profession. Don't take everything they tell you as the ultimate truth. Educate yourself. But it's a good idea. Don't judge them for the ignorance. There's many reasons for the ignorance and you're not God, you're not role to judge them. So sometimes you have to kind of as I say, shut up or <laughs> close your notes and yeah. just, you know, love them. And a lot of the things that you learn in school, especially in medical area, and, and I think other areas, it's interesting because it didn't used to be like that in U.S. school, but if your opinions are different than the professor, you better watch out and shut up. Right. Uh, and, you know, so, so it's okay. Just get your degree, educate yourself. Don't believe that what they tell you is the ultimate truth. Always question everything, including what I'm saying, by the way and see what feels right and find your own truth. I believe by the time you finish school, things will change on the planet. And what I'm saying will be obvious to more people and a lot of wonderful things are going to happen, I believe, anyway. So you're blessed to be at this time at your age. But mm -hmm. again, just do the best you can, don't judge, and do your own thing. You will be able to more than you know I could, though, because you know, I have to keep very low profile. It's not politically mm -hmm. correct to get people well without using drugs or surgery. Right, right. So that's okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for All the right. <laughs> you, You're welcome. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with the practice of Musar? No, what is that? Okay, well, it's a Jewish spiritual path of 
everyday holiness. And I just wondered if that if yeah. that might be a, a practice that would be. Let me let me share with you some what I realize for me. I've seen people, for example, religious Jews that are saints. I've seen even Muslims that are absolutely most wonderful human beings. Most religions, with good intention and out of ignorance, use fear sometimes. Put the fear of God. God is not about fear, it's about love. And so on. Anytime you use, even with good intention, negative emotions or negative belief to be scared, to do not things out of love and discernment, but fear, it's not really God. But what I realize that if you take any positive discipline in any religion and just focus on that, focus on the positive Jesus talk or positive things in the Bible or in Judaism, they all have wonderful things. I'll give you an example because Islam, obviously it's not an accident, got really bad rap. I have many beliefs, some of them godly, some of them, I wouldn't say godly, but I'm, I don't want to judge them, just my discernment. But there is one teaching which is like an oral teaching that some of them, not many, but some follow, says the following. If somebody is bad, love them. If they're still bad, love them more. If they're still bad, love them more and so, until they're good. So that's the same teaching of Jesus. But the point is that if that's what you focus, you'll be connected to God, no matter what religion you are. And the same thing with discipline. Don't make discipline a religion because many people, because of our ego, because our victim belief system tend to feel it. We know if you don't follow our philosophy, you lost soul and you won't be saved. Okay? That's playing God. None of us can play God. The only thing you can do love and your awareness expands and you're closer to God in divine matrix and things will come to you and reveal to you and you have better understanding of things. But if you go from a narrow mind, basically think, oh, I'm better than others. No, none of us is better than anybody in the world. We're all unique and special basically unreplaceable if we live to our potential, but none of us is better than anybody else. We tend to believe it or, or assume it without even realizing most times because of victim belief system. We want to be superior to others. Otherwise, we're not okay. But there's no need for that. Everybody has a spark of God. All equal. And on the other hand, any tool that you pick up and any religion is really, really positive, godly, connects you. And, and I want to make a point I didn't mention, but there, in my material, if you explore it, you will see there is a book, The Art of Soaring. You don't have to be religious, philosophical, or whatever, but people had miracles just whenever they have a negative thought or thought something negative about somebody. It just created a funny word or different scenario or positive or even totally neutral, and they did it consistently. Miracles happen in their life and people around them because when you change, you affect everybody else. The divine matrix is so powerful, it's, so, it's beyond words, really, that the moment you just don't focus on the half empty, which we do automatically with the victim belief system, good things will happen. The only thing is you do it consistently, pay attention consistently. If you just do it partially, we've been, it's like a computer program that had millions, gazillions of lines. One doesn't work already, it disturbed the program. So we have a lot of lines, and it's our responsibility to do it consistently, to be in this space. Then when things start to happen, but you have to be patient. It may happen to you within a day or two. You may have to work six months, not 24 hours a day when you wake up. Like the Jews say, love God with all your heart and all your mind. It's all the same thing, because you love God, you really love yourself because you're part of God and so on and so on. So find out the tools that works for you and you will see transformation. Then you find more and more what you need to do was good for you because what, what works perfectly for one person and it does miracles for them, somebody else needs a different tool, but it doesn't matter. You find your own way. That makes sense? Yes, thank you. So good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining the meeting and have a wonderful evening or day wherever you listen to this video. Thank you.